Hi, this is Lou, welcome to my channel. And today I've got a little project where I'm going to be making some bookmarks. These, I've got uh, some lovely leaf designs on them. So I've chosen eucalyptus, olives and fern. Uh, and I'm going to be painting these with two different colours of watercolour and then adding detail with pen. So I've cut some watercolour paper down to size. This is uh, cold pressed watercolour paper and I'm using just two colours of paint today. The first is Payne's Grey and this is a very kind of bluey Payne's Grey. Uh, and then the second is quinacridone gold. And these are both Windsor and Newton colours, but you can substitute any blue or any yellow for this. And I'm also using a fine liner pen. So I'm going to practice some of the shapes in my sketchbook first. So first the eucalyptus. I've got a slightly curving stem. And then I want to add pairs of leaves. So I just draw some big loops. And they can be like either side of the stem or they can be kind of overlapping in the middle of it and it looks like one leaf is in front of the stem and the other one's behind it. And as I get further up the stem, the leaves get smaller and smaller until uh, right at the end of the stem there's just two tiny little ones right at the top. Now I'm going to replicate that with watercolour. So I'm mixing up a bluey green. So I'm starting with a lot of blue, so the paint's grey really, um, adding a bit of water into it, and then cleaning my brush and going in for the gold. And I'm just adding just the tiniest bit of uh, gold and yellow into my paint's grey. It'll make a very dark bluey green. I'm using quite a big paintbrush, this is a size 12, but it comes to a nice fine point at the tip. So I'm drawing my stem with just the very tip of the brush, but if you want to uh, get a smaller brush and do the stem with that, then there's absolutely nothing wrong with that at all. And then I'm adding in those ovals on either side of the stem, just with a few swishes of the brush. As I go, I'm slightly changing the colour. So sometimes I'll add a little bit more Payne's Grey, sometimes I'll add a little bit more of the uh, yellow, the gold, to make it green. I like the variation that that gives you, and you'll see that uh, a little bit more clearly uh, when we come to do some of the other leaves. So as I go up the stem, I'm just trying to make sure that my leaves vary. So at one point I've got two leaves uh, kind of overlapping with the stem in the middle. And then sometimes I've got the leaves kind of coming off either side. And then right at the top, just a couple little dabs of the brush for two tiny little leaves at the top. Now, some of my uh, areas of paint are quite dark and they're all kind of one tone. So I want to create some like areas of highlight. So while the paint's still wet, I can clean my brush and wipe it off on a paper towel. And then when I put my brush back down on the paint, it'll kind of soak up some of the excess. So I can use that to create some areas of highlights on some of the leaves. For the next leaf, I'm going to do olives. So I'm starting with a similar kind of stem, and then uh, again I've got leaves kind of coming off that stem, but then rather than being kind of round and fat, they're kind of long and thin. Once every so often, instead of a leaf, I'll put a little olive, just a little oval, that's all you need.
So I want the leaves to kind of come off the stem at slightly different angles and be pointing in slightly different directions just to make it look a little bit more organic. And then some of the leaves I want to look like they're kind of bent over a little bit so you can see both the back and the front of the leaf. So the way to do that is to put a little kink in it and you can do that with the paint when you're painting. So for these olives, I want the foliage to be a little bit more green. So I'm adding in a bit more quinacridone gold into my mix. And I'm creating a mix that's kind of quite yellow on one side and then quite blue on the other. So I can dip my brush into different parts of it and, and come out with different colors. So again, I'm using the very tip of my brush to draw a stem. I've got a few wobbles in the middle there, but I'm not gonna worry about that. And then I just paint the leaves. I'm trying to paint them like the, the basic shape in one stroke. So I put the point of my brush to the stem, pull it out and then lift it up. But then I am going back in to add some more color in and to kind of tidy it up in, in a few places if I'm not particularly happy with the shape of it. Now I know that I've got some like different quantities of paint on different parts of my leaves and when they dry they're going to leave like little marks. I'm quite happy with some of them uh, but if you don't want that then uh, take your damp brush and kind of redistribute the paint so you don't kind of get some areas that are really wet and some that are really dry. But it's up to you whether you do that or not. I'm doing it sometimes and then leaving it others. For my olive, I am just using the Payne's Grey, just straight with a little bit of water. A couple of curving marks with my brush and then just use the very tip of it to join it onto the stem. And then I go back to painting leaves. I don't mind if things bleed into one another like if the olive here is bled into the leaf next to it a little bit, that's absolutely fine. You'll notice as I go up that I'm sometimes painting a more yellowy green leaf and sometimes painting a, a more of a bluey green leaf. Um, and quite often I'm going back in to dab some darker color in, especially towards the stem. And a couple of places where the stem has kind of, it looks quite pale, I'm just going over it a little bit just to give it a bit more presence. And then again, I'm going in with my clean dry paintbrush to dab up some of the excess on those olives. For my third leaf, I'm gonna do a fern. So again, Use the same kind of slightly curving stem, but then this time we're gonna add little side stems. And they start out quite wide and then they get shorter as they get towards the top. And then the little uh, leaves, little nodes of leaves, uh, come out from those side stems. And as you go further down the fern, the more of them you get. I find it easier to work from the top to the bottom when making ferns. So I'm just gonna keep going, adding more and more little leaf nodes onto either side of the uh, little branching stems from the fern and keep going until I get to the bottom. So for this, I'm adding an awful lot more of the gold into the mix. So I've got a very yellowy green here. So there's my stem and then I just start at the top and I just use the point of my brush and just press it down and that should give you a nice little kind of rounded leaf shape but if they're a bit wonky or if they come out a little bit raggedy then that's okay too 
and I work down the fern just adding a side stem on one side and then the other making them a little bit longer each time as as much as I can manage with the size of this bookmark. And you'll notice that I find it much more awkward drawing the little leaves when my brush is pointing away from me. So about halfway down this fern, I take the wise decision to turn my paper so that each branch of leaves that I'm drawing uh, I'm in the right position for. And I'm painting this one mostly with that nice yellowy green, but I'm also dropping in some areas of Payne's Grey, especially towards the stem, just like to vary the colour as I'm going. And you do just get into a rhythm of just pressing the paintbrush down and allowing it to make a mark. And you'll see that my little branches, some of them are a little bit wonky, some of them are facing in slightly different directions, but I think that just makes it look a bit more organic and a bit more natural. So I'm just finishing by dropping some of that darker green colour, which is mostly Payne's Grey, in at the bottom of the leaves and next to the stem, where the paint's still wet. So the watercolour portion is done, and if you like them, you could just leave them like this, but I quite like the way a graphic line looks against the watercolour. I like the contrast of it, and I like that the pen helps me kind of define the shapes of the leaves and add in some details, and I love details. All I'm doing is using the pen to outline the leaves that I've put in. But if I don't get them exactly, well, that's okay. In fact, sometimes I do that deliberately just to kind of tidy up the shape of the leaf. As I'm going, I'm thinking about drawing front to back. So I want to think about drawing in the leaf first that's uh, towards me. And then do I see the stem? first before the next leaf and if that's the case then I'd need to draw that in second and then the leaf at the back. As you keep going up the stem you, every pair of leaves you need kind of you can make a decision about which leaf is in front and which one is behind and most of them you could draw them the other way around and it would look just as good. And then I'm just going to add a little line to the centre of each of my leaves just to kind of, well, just a little bit more detail and to indicate the direction of the leaves. For the olives, I'm doing pretty much the same. So again, I'm going around the leaves and the stems. But then what I'm doing this time is occasionally I'll just wobble my pen a bit and then add an extra line. And that just makes it look like the edge of the leaf's curled over and you're kind of seeing the underside of it. And then sometimes I'm putting in like a nice big S curve down the leaf. So I'll go from one side to the other in a nice curve and then just complete the outline. Other times I'm sort of ignoring where the paint is because I decide that actually I've got a better shape for the leaf. So I, want, I can improve it by uh, putting the pen in a different place. So I really like that trick of 
doing a little S curve on the leaves to make it look like they're folded over. It's really tempting to do it on all of them, but I think that would look a little bit odd too. And then again, I'm adding a little direction line down the center of the leaf. For the fern, well, I'm outlining it again. But um, for this one, I'm holding my pen a little bit more loosely and I'm working a little bit faster. I'm trying to get into a nice rhythm of drawing the little wiggly lines all around the leaves. And that means that I don't exactly outline every leaf, not in the way it's been painted. I am working a little bit faster on this. I mean, not hugely, but... Uh, it's kind of nice to let your kind of controlling brain take a little back seat occasionally and allow yourself just the freedom to get into a rhythm with drawing these kind of nice oval shapes and using the watercolour as a guide but not sticking rigidly to it. So to make my little watercolour paintings into bookmarks all I'm doing is punching a hole in the top and then I've got a little bit of twine, which I'm going to cut, poke through the little hole, and loop it through itself. Now, I made my twine a little bit too long, so I'm just going to trim it back down to a, a more reasonable size. So there we go. If you give this project a go, I'd love to see it. You can find me on Instagram at Lou Rachel Davis, and I love to see the work that you tag me in. If you like the video, then give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, then I'd love you to subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you in another video again very, very soon. Bye bye.